Shalom, it's Mariah Aliza with Mariah Shelley Village and today I am shooting this video to share our history and geography studies for grade 7, also grade 4. I am going to put the link to a video that I shared last year and it was called a generic history plan K through 8. Um, my youngest son because my children are three years apart is on that plan a year off of it and my oldest son is on it perfectly so when i say fourth grade you're gonna see me be a year ahead in a sense of where my generic plan is but nonetheless i'm following the same plan i just had a odd year difference so i had to make up for that okay so i have a little cheat sheet here. Um, at the end of the video, you'll see the less review screen come up, and then it goes through K through 8. But I'm going to quickly share it right now. So in kindergarten, community helpers and African American bios, first grade, social studies slash me on the map. In second grade, a geographical approach to studying Africa. Third grade, a world history overview. And so for my oldest son he's had a world history overview already my youngest son has too but i'm going to concentrate on my oldest son since that's the one that's following this plan to a t um so he's already had that and so the four years later is where we are um in this video let me catch up to that so in fourth grade early american history we used our history revealed volume one which was written by me and then in fifth grade we studied Modern American History, Part 1, and that was also Our History Revealed, Volume 2, Part 1, which was also written by me. It will be available this summer coming. And then in Grade 6, we did Central America, West Indies, and South America, which we are um, just finishing up this school year. And then in 7th grade, um, in my video, I said world history and world geography, and I meant that, but I probably should have noted with an emphasis on the East, and you'll understand what I mean in this video as I go along. And then in 8th grade, Modern American History Part 2, which we're going to use, Our History Revealed, Volume 2, Part 2, which um, was also written by me, and then we'll do state study alongside that in 8th grade, so that'll be the 1920 um, school year once we get there. But I wanted to give you a recap of my generic history plan. It doesn't have to be followed perfectly um, the way that I have it, but you just want to make sure those um, concepts and, and continents and peoples, you have to go back and watch your other video. I said a lot of things are studied within that K through 8 time range. Okay, so you don't it's okay if you want to follow that plan. You're like, oh, we haven't done this. Just get in where you fit in and it will loop back around. Trust me. Okay, so I'm going to get started with this video for the 2018-2019 school year. We are going to be studying world history, world geography with a concentration um, in the east. So we're going to focus on um, Australia and some of the Pacific Islands there. We're going to focus on Asia and what is known as the Middle East, even though I don't call it that. And then we are going to go into Africa and then we will conclude in Africa. So that's going to be our progression. We're going to start as far east as you can in Australia, and then we're going to work our way west, westward into Asia, continue to go westward until it's called the Middle East, continue to go westward until we get into Africa, and then we are going to um, conclude our studies in Africa, and we're actually going to conclude our studies in West Africa, and I do that for a reason that I'll probably explain in next year's video. Okay, um, so... The first resource that I'm going to share is Eastern Hemisphere, People, Places, and Change. This is a textbook. Um, I have like three textbooks. Well, really two because um, one of them is split off into two. But like two main textbooks. Um, one for my seventh grader, one for my fourth grader, and then everything else are going to be like living books or literature books or resources. I'm not a huge textbook 
person, but for this type of study, we are going to use um, them sparingly. Um, and the, the reason for that, I guess I have a few, but my main reason for that is for them to have a reference or a source of information all in one place where we can just grab information quickly and succinctly. And then we have other resources in living books as we expound on certain nations because I'm not going to, um, this is not a continental study. We've already done something like that before in grade three um, where they kind of understood all seven continents um, in an at-large way. This is going to be specifically studying certain countries on a particular continent, in this case these three continents that I want to um, teach on for this course. So for example, when we get to Africa, I know specifically we're going to study Ethiopia, but we won't study all the other nations. So I just want them to get um, like a succinct understanding of some of the other things that happen, like maybe all of North Africa at one time, since we're only going to um, study one nation in particularly for like a concentrated study. So that's why I'm using the textbook for this particular course. So now let me show, you, show it to you. Eastern Hemisphere, people, places, changes. Um, you can get, this textbook exists by Holt, so this textbook um, exists for different state editions. So I have the edition for my state because I bought my book in my state and so that's what was available to me. But you can also go um, on Amazon and then get whatever state you want, get your own or just get a generic one. But this one is like meeting what most of... Um, the standards so what most of the topics they would cover in like school here that's what that's doing so that's what it means when it says like the state edition so I have that mostly for my seventh grader so I want to um, go through the table of contents really 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 quickly um, because because it's set in the east we'll use most of this so I didn't want a world history um, text because then I was gonna have to weed out all the other continents and nations that I didn't want so in this one, uh, let's see, this one starts with Asia, we won't. But to just give you an idea, the history of Asia, and then it goes into um, like the history, the culture, and then the geography. So that tends to be the trend in this book. And so that's what happened. Um, it gives the continents in the different regions. So I have Central Asia, South Asia. East Asia and Africa I have North Africa, West Africa, East Africa, Central Central Africa, excuse me, South Southern Africa, and then in the Pacific, it pretty much just has Australia and New Zealand, and then those Pacific islands. That's how it's broken up. In case you're interested in that one, okay. And then for my fourth grader, I use Princess Hall because they have smaller textbooks and they split them across two, and just with him. Um, being the age that he is, that will be more user-friendly for us. So both of these world explorers, one is Asia and the Pacific, the other is Africa, will be what we use. And so the Asia and the Pacific one is going to take care of um, Australia as well as Asia as well as the Middle East. And then Africa is going to take care of Africa and all of the regions within. So I hope that makes sense. So together, combined, grade four. And then this one alone, grade seven. And it's not that we won't borrow information from each other out of there, but I plan on the work that I assign, the reading that I assign, activities that may be inside this book that I assign will be coming out of this book for my fourth grader and out of this one for my seventh grader. Okay? So that's like the crux of the what we're going to be using. And then I have some supplement. So we are going to use Seth Vaughn, World Geography and You, book two. Make sure you get book two because book one is U.S., Canada, and Europe. Book two is um, Asia, Africa, Middle East. So we're going to use this. I haven't decided exactly how. Well, I have a working idea, um, but I don't know exactly how. Um, but I, I do plan on... Probably, I'm either going to buy another one so they both have one or I'll just photocopy um, the pages here so that they can fill them out 
as we go, especially for certain things. Like, we're not going to do a major continental study. I'm sorry, a major country study on Jordan. But I wouldn't mind them reading this quick bio about, looks like, a leader. Oh, the queen. Um, of Jordan. And then maybe doing an activity or... Um, a vocabulary we remember the activities that they have in here so this is how I'm going to use this like oh I would love for you to learn about this topic or this person or this event in a really really quick way to just kind of give you some exposure to it we're not going to actually go into an in-depth study so that's how I plan on using that um, you've seen me use this probably in every uh, geography slash history course that I've taught the world atlas I love it um, they love it so we're going to continue to use it and because it's world it covers the continents that we're in and if I'm not mistaken it covers all of them we use this um, this school year the 17-18 school year get to the table of contents here there we go we use this in the 17-18 school year for our West Indian Central American and South American studies too and we loved it Yes, it has the majority of what we're going to study. So it looks like the book is split into North America, South America, and Europe. We did that already. And so now I'll just be on this side. With the Middle East, depending on which resource you're using, some of the nations will fall under Africa. Some of the nations will fall under Asia because Middle East really isn't a continent. So when you have a country that is in the Middle East, and it's like presented in this way, you have to force it into a particular um, continent. So what I like to suggest is look at a map, go through the Middle Eastern countries and decide where you want to place it. Are you going to deem it an African country or are you going to deem it an Asian country? I like to just call that whole mass Arabia. And... Um, explain to them why but I still for the sake of a continent I still would put the countries in a particular um, continent so it's just easier for them to retain that way okay when we get to Africa I'm just gonna recycle this resource we've used it for um, several history classes that I've taught but we're gonna revisit it again classical Africa when we get there. Um, I picked this up in a local used bookstore. It's called One Classroom, Many Cultures, Bridging the Gap. I didn't know that it was going to be that awesome, but it was like two bucks. So I figured I would just um, grab it and see. And I love it. I don't know where you could find it. I haven't tried to look for it, but um, I really love the quick information. Like, let me show you, for example. No, I don't want to do Egypt. Let's see, let me find India. I really liked India. So this is something we can open up to this page and we get location, the people, we get a map. Let's see, what else do we have? We get the government, the lands, and the flag all in one place. And then we get history, like big pockets of history in good paragraph form. So the Indus Valley, civilization, Greek invasion, ancient dynasties, Middle Eastern and European invasions, um, and independence. And there's also food, sports, art, and literature, music and dance, Indian celebrations and their holidays, um, and then a timeline. So for me, this is great. And I wish I had one for each nation I was going to teach on, but I don't. This one has Australia, India, Egypt, Mexico, Japan, and Ireland. So I won't need Ireland, and I already used... Mexico. So I'll just be using Australia, India, Egypt, and Japan for this one, but I like it. So we're using it. Um, then I have Factivity and Atlas Explores the Wonders of Your World. So this one is of the world, so it has um, all of the continents, but of course we're going to focus on the three that I'm teaching just to give you an idea of the table of contents there. So I'm going to use this. It's like workbook-ish. It's like sometimes you read, sometimes you do things. It just depends. And I've already started um, pulling like which pages they'll do in this for the particular continent or country, depending on how the activity um, is laid out, what we're going to do. And I like how it is fitting well in the lessons that I'm building. So we'll use that. And then another supplement that we have is the Hello Atlas. Um, my kids love knowing how to say 
um, like different greetings and sayings in different languages. So I got this for them. We did use it in our um, Caribbean and Central and South America studies. And so I wanted to use it again when we studied the East. So let me show you what it looks like. So for example, <laughs> yeah, this is a good one. It has what the people look like, and then it has the different languages, like how you say hello, and then it translates it for you. So for example, it looks like um, Ehwa. So in Ehwa, how do I say, no, I'm sorry. I say Ehwa, that is hello. And then how are you, Mauha? I'm guessing, I'm not sure. Um, but this is the Paez language. And then it tells you where they speak it at and all that type of stuff. Um, the globe here, no, the map here, excuse me, helps. So it tells me where I can find certain pages, um, where I can find the language, I'm sorry, and the pages that match up to it. So, for example, we're, we are in, let's say, Africa. I can go to pages 50 through 59 and find different African languages. So I see that this language is spoken, I won't try to pronounce anymore, this language is spoken in Somalia, this language is Berber, I know that one. Um, what else is here? Yoruba, okay, or Africans, different languages, uh, French, the guy's name is Pierre, he speaks French. So these are all the languages that are spoken in Africa, or the major ones, I should say. And so I'll be using the Hello Atlas for that. And then we're also, I just grabbed a bunch of who was, who is, um, books or what is or where is, um, books for them to learn, especially in the nations that we're going to do specific studying on. So who was Gandhi? Where is the Great Wall? Who is Malala? Who is the Dalai Lama? Who was Nelson Mandela? They both were at this already from African American Studies, but we'll bring it up again. Where is the Taj Mahal? What were the Twin Towers? Um, I still don't have all of them. There's, my books are coming in, I know. Um, who was Genghis Khan is one, and that's not here. I wish there was a who was um, Hail Selassie, but there isn't. So I got this little pocketbook. It's like 80-something pages or something, something quick that I can read to them as they're doing some um, history and geography activities to kind of fill in some more things. So I got this one. The reviews on this were kind of like half and half. Well, a little bit, more, a little bit more than half and half in favor. So I know his name is misspelled and that drives people crazy. That was a lot of the reviews and I'll just correct that here. It wasn't, it wasn't bad enough for me not to get it. So we'll um, read that. So the last thing that I want to say is how I'm going to um, organize their binders and how I'm going to instructionally teach the course. So I plan on using three binders one to represent Asia slash Pacific, so like Australia would be in that one. The other one, um, Arabia or Middle East, and then the other would be Africa. So you don't have to have three individual binders. You can have one big one if you want, but I'll have three binders. I'll be using flex binders because that's like a, a bridge between a traditional three ring binder and then like spiral bounds. I prefer to pre-print all of my stuff in the summer and then single bind with the spiral bind one major um, journal or notebook for the school year. But the way that I'm going to teach this course, I just can't print everything that I want up front. So that option won't work for me. And the three ring binder option drives me crazy, depending on what it is. It does drive me crazy with history. So I'm going to settle with the flex binder. When I get ready to put the binder together, I'll show you what it looks like when I'm doing what a flex binder looks like. So it's kind of a, a bridge again between a three ring and a spiral and so that'll be better for us. So I'd like to be able to flip it back and let them let's see if I have an example. Yeah, I like to be able to flip it back like this and let them work. That's easier for my, my sons to write in like that. So that's why and the flex allows that but then it has the option to pull it out and stuff 
whereas the spiral is kind of like permanent once you do it. Okay, so I'm going to have three binders with those continents. And so the dividers will be the countries that we're going to study. So for example, our Africa Flex binder will have a tab for Ethiopia because we're doing an in-depth country study on Ethiopia and a tab for South Africa and a tab for Morocco. I'm just naming out some ones that I remember. So it'll look like that. And so then when they have their binders, they'll be able to tab to Ethiopia and everything for Ethiopia that we're studying um, that they need for studying will be there. Okay, so that's how our binders will look, and you'll see that when I do that video. And the last thing that I wanted to leave with you is how, or the things that I want to address um, for each country study as we move continent to continent. And that is geography, history, faith. I don't, I don't like to call it religion. So we're, most people will say religion, I would say faith. So geography, history, faith, culture, key people, places, and events, and then last, current events and issues. So for every country that we learn about, I'll be teaching those major six themes or ideas for each one in case you would like to do that as well. Um, once I have everything printed and ready to go, again, it won't be a permanent um, bind, so there'll be things that I add to it, and maybe I'll do videos throughout the school year so you can see the progression of it growing as we study a particular um country maybe i'll do that i'm not sure yet not going to commit but i will share like the first our binder the first few weeks that are in there i can tell you i know we're going to start with australia so when i do share that will already be loaded and put together in there okay so this is what we're studying um for history and geography for the 18 19 school year covering um grades seven and four and actually what you see me do it will work for grades four through eight. So if you have a student in any one of those grades or in all of those grades and you want to kind of um, piggyback off of me, you'll be able to do that. Okay, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.